All right, so it was apparently highly requested that I make a uh, breakdown of this, so I will start doing that. Let me move my mic closer to my face. Okay, so um, it, uh, to understand this project, uh, why it exists, it was it was made for a competition uh, for who could make like the coolest progressive jazz song. And uh, it was supposed to be under two minutes in length, and it could be uh, whatever, as long as it showed progressive jazz. And I somehow <laughs> managed to place, um, even though that this was not very progressive. It was it was jazz, but it was not very progressive. But anyways, um, that's why this came to be. And the the way I tried to make it progressive was I tried to mix big band with Latin, which is some of the more theory behind it. I'll go into that, but. Um, yeah, this, this is really simple. It's, there's a lot less automation than I usually do, and there's not really much going on in the, uh, the mixer. Um, it's really just placing patterns and then mixing it like a real band. Um, this isn't the fully mastered version either, because I had to export it as a wave and then uh, do stuff with the wave file to actually fully master it. This is the project isn't completely mastered, though. That's fine. Um, anyways, so I have a lot of patterns, and I apparently I stopped like actually naming them <laughs> after after a certain point. I just kind of like wanted to finish it. Um, most most of the it comes down to like the, the off beats and really swing is this a triplet so I subdivided I subdivided the beat into a triplet each beat goes like a triplet like that and uh, if you if you delete the middle triplet it'll create a swing sound and then there's a very classic drum beat uh, which is used in the sing 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 and it basically accents you can see the accents down here. Um, it it plays eighth straight. This eighth note's like do 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 do, but um, it has accents everywhere to make it sound interesting. So it's do 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 type of thing, and that really brings out the feel to that. And like I said, there's velocity sensitive drums, so a loud tom will sound different than a quiet tom. Um, for so th this is all in E minor, and really this this type of jazz, Latin influence, and also big band, it doesn't it doesn't require that much like insane like chord stacking. It, it's just this, like a, it's in minor, and then all the other chords are just it, it's like one five one five if you know theory. So one one. One one five one 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 five, um, and it just changes the voicing. Like uh, I raised the, the E flat up an octave right there, like a D sharp. Um, and also uh, being really heavy on the off beats helps. And, 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 and so that's those three are on the on beats, and then it goes, it shifts to the off beats in the next measure, and then it goes back to the on and off. And I do that quite frequently throughout the track. Um, also, using drums as risers are the toms. Really helpful. I have some layered drum hits to make it more emphasized. I'm not sure if that's the best practice because, like, you physically can't do that in real life. Because I think this would require like four hands to actually play, but <laughs> that's fine. Um, I have the upright bass outlining the chords because that's what happens in the jazz band is you have your bass player going do 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 um, and then I have the brass this the brass pattern is actually a lot more than brass so I used for the brass let's see yeah so this is uh, pop brass and pop what pop brass does is for this specific patch it is uh, sustained short Q 
key switch and what that means is all the notes um, all the notes are controlled by these blue notes so these are the playable notes um, and these blue notes will control the articulation so right now they're staccato but if I wanted to change it using those blue notes I can change the articulation which is what these low these notes down here are these are the key switch which changes the notes and uh, pop brass also um, it doesn't have separate instruments it the MIDI is the entire brass section so it covers the trombones and the trumpets and yeah r really that's what it covers trombone and trumpets and then I think as a sa saxophone isn't a brass instrument so I'm not sure if it's com like included in here but I wouldn't be surprised if it is um, and once again it's just like E minor stuff <laughs> Um, with some licks, not like this chromatic lick. Badoo ba it. That's a classic <laughs> type thing to do. Um, I also layered it with some saxophone, or I, was, I have a piano playing the chords, obviously. And then. Um, when there's no brass playing, I have some saxophones like do 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 type, because uh, that also happens in jazz, that's important. Um, I did layer the three saxophones. I have an alto, tenor, and berry sax, all coming from East-West Goliath. Plain. Um, that's really, and then um, also something very important. And, uh, or something very important with the instruments is that in the mixer they are all routed to a dry and a wet and basically I use a convolution reverb um, where the dry channel has the dry turned up and only a little bit of wet and then that is routed to the master and then the wet channel is like um, like all wet and like very little dry and then that's routed to the master and then None of these are routed to the master. They're all parallel. Uh, this is called parallel reverb when you have them routed to a dry and a wet channel, and those are both routed to the master. So it sounds like you're playing in the mic, but you can also hear the uh, the room around it using both of these. It's kind of neat uh, technique to get a real, really uh, realistic sound going on there. And I have that for all the real instruments. They're all being routed into it. Um, and I, I also stopped naming, <laughs> naming mixer tracks too. I, I got lazy with the organization of the project. Um, I, I did have to like change the volume of the drums throughout to make sure that it was mixed properly. And then during the piano solo, I turned up the piano volume. Um, I turned up the drum volume during the drum solo, turned it back down over here. Um, these are the articulations for the saxophone solo. I, I think I used a tenor sax for the saxophone solo. Let's see. Yeah, I use this is Goliath and it's yes tenor sax, um, and this it says mod, which means I can use a modulation wheel to change the articulation. And the modulation wheel for this patch has three settings, I think. So when it's all the way down, it's usually very uh, staccato-y and like punchy, and when it's all the way up, all the notes start slurring together. You can hear that right here. <laughs> And then all the notes here go are really smooth. Um, well, okay, it it's not as punchy. I think I I completely forgot exactly what it does, but <laughs> it changes the articulation of the uh, saxophone. So that way it's controlled, and also uh, the saxophone is velocity sensitive. So there's lots of velocity changes going on within the solo and. It's all revolving around the blue, like a minor blue scale, which is actually kind of boring, but it works because I'm doing key changes. Um, where is the chords? Piano chords in E minor, and then I go up to F minor, and then that changes into F sharp minor at some point. Um, during solo sections, if you're thinking of the theory, like you want the uh, the melody to take precedence and then you want
because the melody is outlining the chords, so you really don't need too many chords if you have a good soloist. Um, so I have the chords just being played every every two measures on the and or it's the uh, one two three the and the three and then the on beat so and then every four measures there's a saxophone lick which kind of brings some groove into it. Um, saxophone lick also does key changes. And the way I did the key change is I just transitioned into the, the fifth chord of the new key right before going into the, the new key. Um, that's usually how you do key changes. And at the end I included a little brass lick which is basically something. And you can definitely hear the uh, the changes in the articulation using the key switches in the brass here. I accidentally skipped away, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, over over here um, in the the first head section, there's the piano. Or, or, uh, th those that's the alto. I split everything up in this one, so. Are the alto tenor and barry saxophones and then the uh, the bass the drums more drums there's a piano and then there's the the guitar just to add some flavor to it and the, the guitar starts playing chords uh, throughout the solo section which is what it usually does and then you have the brass separated up here and then later in this song i just combine everything in the one pattern because it was easy for me to see the ghost notes and think about it so I have the piano I didn't include the guitar in this past section I think it caused mixing problems so but I have the brass playing um, and this is actually the same the same lick that's or not the same lick but the same theme that's over here just up a key or it's up a whole step because it changes keys twice over here Um, what is important over here is these offbeats. This is what really brings the energy. The here, those three. Every single instrument plays those three hits. You can hear it right there, and then also in the, the upright. So it's kind of gated, and then um, that that's the Latin influence. A lot of Latin jazz will do that. And they'll, they'll do that. Um, I think the the lead trumpet patch is not completely working because that that wasn't correct. Yeah. Um, basically, this wheel changes the articulation, and the lead trumpet can either be a solid note, or it could fall, or it could like rise and like fall, or it could do a shake, like do type thing. Um, that's what this was supposed to do, and I'm not sure why it's not doing that. <laughs> but over here, I had the lead trumpet playing above everyone else, and then falling at the very end. Yeah, the uh, the modulation wheel isn't working right now, so I'm not sure what is up with that. I might have moved everything a little bit to the left or something. Um, and then the drums. I forgot to mention the drums change pattern during the head sections. Instead of being all toms, they're just <laughs> and then the uh, the hi hats are going tss, 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 tss. It, like the most simple thing you can do. Um, and yeah, but most of it really comes down like the I'm gonna transition to the mixing. Most of the mixing comes down to volume. And uh, making sure if you want to increase the volume in something, you want to try to compress it before you actually increase the volume, or else it will start like overpowering everything else. Because <laughs> there's a lot of space that you need to fill before you actually like, start compressing stuff and then. or uh, start raising the volume, if that makes sense. Um. 
and the these lead trumpet there's there's uh two different patches there's a rip solo which i used and then there's this scream rear trumpet which is used at the very end for the high notes um I, there's not really much else to it besides all of that stuff. It, mo the biggest part was trying to figure out how to get everything to mesh together because um, the way these were these instruments were recorded in the first place, because um, this is a rompler or East West is a rompler, which means it's it's a VST that uses actual samples of real instruments and it uses scripts to change the pitch and like have different articulations based of what you want it to do and to get every single instrument with a different script uh pushed together into the same space takes a lot of time um and most of it comes down to the reverb and the eqing because you want to make sure nothing is like unnaturally eq'd um but you also want to make sure nothing's over compressed or else it doesn't sound like real music and then one one problem that people mentioned in the thread is that it sounded over quantized and i definitely did not do anything to fix it i just put everything like on the grid and then if i wanted to fix that i could just Like, like I could just do that and then maybe like change the volume a little bit like I, I made it way too perfect and that's probably the biggest flaw in this track um, but it's still listenable and I think it's still good so that is my breakdown if you have any more questions I can answer them but yeah thank you <laughs>